Well, hello there. I just wanted to wrap up my Chip 8 series. I, I thought I was done with the last video, but I wanted to talk just a little bit more about it because first of all, I found uh, a bug or two and wanted to point those out. I also want to point out where this code will live in GitHub. And I wanted to talk a little bit about some things I did to just speed it up just a little bit. So uh, the first thing I'll point out is that I had a bug in the code and the bug was in the clear method, of course, which is one of the first ones we wrote. And I had this originally set as display zero is equal to zero. It should have been display i is equal to zero. And I just hadn't run a program that exhibited that issue until recently. So I tracked that down and corrected it, and it is corrected in GitHub as well. The next thing I did was I profiled the app, and I just used CPU sampling, which is built into Visual Studio. And I noticed that a lot of the time in the app was actually spent pulling SDL events. And this kind of makes sense um, in some ways. It's just a very expensive function, and it's being run every single CPU step. And so what I did was I pulled it out into the uh, into this if statement that only runs at 60 hertz. And so that way I only pull the events when the screen is being updated, which I think is fine. Uh, and that really helps speed up the application. And aside from that, I didn't make too many other uh, performance improvements. Everything looked pretty decent. The last thing I'll mention is that I changed the frequency of my beep to try to make it more synchronous with the start and stop of the timer. So the timer, um, the sound timer lasts for um, 16 millisecond increments because it runs at 60 hertz. And so I tried to make it so that an integer number of periods of the sine wave would also fit within 16.6 or whatever it is milliseconds. And so you can see uh, that done here, I changed it to 604.1 hertz instead of 1000 hertz. So it's a little bit of a lower frequency tone, but that way you don't get the nasty pops at the start and stop of the sine wave. It just starts off at zero and finishes at zero, and that way it's a nice clean beep, or at least a lot closer to it. Might not be perfect, but it's pretty close. Those are the major changes. I also did include my own sample, uh, chip eight, file here. I should be able to just run it. Let's see. Uh, it just prints out a couple of the built-in font numbers. The reason I included my own was because I wasn't sure what the licensing was on the ones that are available online. So I wanted to be squeaky clean when uploading it to GitHub. Uh, so I did create my own little sample program there. And I think that's about it. And what I will be doing is over the next few days uploading these videos and I'm also going to be starting my next emulator project. So I think I've picked Game Boy as my emulator of choice or my system of choice to emulate. So I'll be starting to record a couple of those over the next few days and we'll see how far we get. I hope it's an interesting series. And last but not least, you can find all of this stuff on github.com slash GIAWA, G-I-A-W-A. And the repository I just uploaded was this Chip8 repository. It includes the 64-bit version of SDL2. It also includes the bindings here, and the solution should automatically copy them into the debug and release directories when you build it. So you shouldn't have to do anything fancy there. And it does include that sample program as discussed, and it's all licensed under the MIT license, as is most of my code. All right, with that, all done. I think that wrap, wraps up the Chip8 interpreter. It was really useful to find out a little bit about uh, emulation, quote unquote, more like interpreting. I think that's going to be helpful when starting to look into the Game Boy. Might be biting off a bit more than I can chew, but just like with this project, I'm going into the Game Boy project with no solid understanding of how the thing works. And hopefully through these videos, both you and I will get to learn about how it works and put together the simulator. And as I build that one, since it's a larger project, I'll be putting that up on GitHub. So if anyone has any pull requests or issues or anything like that, maybe we can work together to make this thing as good as it can be. All right, I'm done here. Have a great day and as always, have fun coding.